Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the Mach-E vlog. Today, we're going to test out the new charging curve of the Mustang Mach-E above 80%. If you haven't heard previously, the Mach-E would sort of slow down at 80% to 11 kilowatts of charging, 11 to 14 kilowatts. And supposedly with the new update that this car just got, that should be improved. So let's go test it out. Ford is rolling out some updates right now that do a bunch of different things, but one of the key parts is the charging curve that I was just talking about. So above 80%, we should get quite a bit faster charging. Before that, I don't know if it's changed at all. So we're gonna test that out today. Right now, the car is at 11%. I'm gonna to try to get it down to 10%. And then we'll charge from 10 to at least 90. We'll see when we go up to 95, 97%, depending on how it's going. Most people, when they're on a road trip, they'll probably stop at around 10% and then charge to whatever they need to get to the next station. Occasionally, you may want to charge up and above 80%. And that's what we sort of want to test out today. Like how long does it take to go from a, a realistic, real world 10% on up to 90, 95%. It was pretty cold this morning. We had a low of 18 degrees here in Denver. It's warmed up, it's in the low 40s right now. So the battery probably isn't you know as warm as it would be on a normal road trip. So I'm expecting that when we first plug in, it'll be a bit slow, but it'll, it'll eventually speed up and then level off until we hit that 80%. And at that point, I expect it to decline. I've seen other people say that they get around 30 kilowatt hours. Uh, charging above 80%. So we're going to see what we get here on a realistic real world test. So now I'm going to drive around just a little bit in the parking lot. We're going to get down to 10% and then we'll plug in and see how it goes. Okay. Now you can see we're down at 10% state of charge and we're here at a 350 kilowatt charger. This is at Colorado Mills near Golden, Colorado. And uh, lucky for us, this charging session is going to be free. It's the holiday weekend for Christmas and New Year's, and they are giving out free charging for this whole week. Electrify America has done this for several other holidays, including Fourth of July and Thanksgiving. Wouldn't plan on it or count on it for a future trip, but it works out great for us, and hopefully they'll keep doing this type of thing. So let's uh, plug in. I'll get the cameras set up and then we will be ready to go. Okay, so we plugged in. We're already up to 14% charge and it is pulling 118 kilowatts. Normally when I plug into a 350, I can expect it to peak out at like 166 kilowatts initially and then it'll slow back down to just over 100 or like 125. But I think uh, the cold temperatures are affecting it a little bit. The battery is not super warm. This should not affect our test for the upper end of the charging curve. We should be at a warm battery by then, but right now it's going on at a fairly good clip. Let me look back down again. Still at 112, so we're gonna keep watch of this. I have a timer going. I'm also recording data with car scanner. So hopefully we'll collect a lot of good info on this and it will be all nice and smooth. So you can see we just crossed three minutes in it's still outputting at 109 kilowatts. We've already got 5.4, 5.7 kilowatt hours, and we're up to 17%. And I have my other phone hooked up here using car scanner. So this is monitoring a few pieces of information. The key is over here, you can see the EV charger power is at 106.46 kilowatts. Um, let's see, what else? There's a high voltage battery state of charge, and then that's the state of charge display. One of the things that's interesting is, depending on what state of uh, charge the battery's in, sometimes the displayed value, that's what's actually on the dash, is different than the actual state of charge as calculated by apps like Car Scanner. So right now, the state of charge listed on the screen at 20% is less than what is calculated at the high voltage battery state of charge at 22.5963%. Now we're up to 24%. And like I said, we're gonna to try to go up above 
90% today. Normally on a road trip, uh, I will either A, go to whatever the car is calling for, plus a little bit of a buffer. So sometimes it'll say like your next stop, you need to charge to 57%. So I might go to like maybe 60, 65%. But most of the time I'll go just up to 80%. And that's usually because I need a break and don't mind walking around Walmart or getting something to eat or doing whatever, just so that the car can get up to 80% and I have more of a buffer. And the reason that we stop at 80% is historically, the Mach-E slows down significantly when it hits 80% state of charge. So for example, like at 79%, it might be charging at uh, you know 80 uh, kilowatts. And then as soon as it hits that 80% number, it'll drop down to 11 to 14 kilowatt uh, going into the, the car. So it takes quite a bit of time to go from 80 to 85, 90%. So I'd rather just go ahead and move on to the next charger. For today's test, I'm not really doing like an official zero to 100, obviously. And that's what a lot of people will do to test out the charging curve of an EV. But I think what we're doing today is more realistic. Um, the way that you or I would probably use this on a real, real trip. So I'm not, you know, turning the, the cabin heat on. I'm not driving it crazy or anything like that. I just pulled into the charger at about 10% and plugged in and that's that's how we would probably do it in the real world you know there there are times on a road trip where we've come in lower percentage me personally this is my first ev still getting used to road tripping in an ev i don't like you know cutting it close and i doubt many of you like cutting it close so i think it's realistic to pull in at 10 percent, just plug in you're not worried about you know the cabin temperature running to heat to precondition the battery or anything like that or you know, the outside temperature, you know, we've, we've taken road trips where the temperature has been low in the low thirties. We've taken road trips where the temperature has been 120 today. It just so happens. Let's see. It says 45 degrees on the screen over here. So that's just the way it goes. You know, we're going to put out the numbers and look at the numbers and see whatever they are. And that's just how it, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles, I guess. Right now we've been plugged in for 12 minutes and we've gotten about 23 kilowatt hours delivered and we're at 36% state of charge after plugging in at 10% and we're at 101 kilowatts for the charging current charging speed. Now, if you're wondering what this software update is that I keep talking about that our mach -E got that's enabling the faster charging speed. It is Customer Satisfaction Program 21P22, and it's not being sent over the air. Maybe they will, you know, somewhere down the road. The reason I got mine is I had to take my Mach-E in for uh, a, a brake issue that they took care of, and while they were doing that, they also applied the updates. And the updates include better charging curve above 80%, as well as better cold weather range and a few other little things. Um, I'm trying to remember, uh, I think it says a better uh, accuracy with the, the guess a meter, the range uh, uh, meter on the car. And let's see what else. Uh, there, there was also like an issue that we, we experienced where some region coming down very, very steep, very long mountain grades can cause an issue. So that update is in there as well. So a lot of little updates. I believe it also updated some phone as a key um, stuff. So that should be more reliable. Lots of good little updates. The one that we're excited about for right now is the charging curve. So we got that. Uh, you might be able to get this done if you take your car into the dealer and referencing one of the problem areas that's listed in the customer satisfaction program. I'll put a link in the description so you can check out the software updates that are listed in here, um, all the improvements. And if you have any questions, it's a forum thread. So you can look at all the, the, the questions and answers that other people have asked. Okay, we're getting close to the 80% mark. Hopefully this goes well. It's showing 78, 78. Let's go down here. 78. 
and we're pulling 80.14 kilowatts. And like I said, normally right at 80%, you can watch the charger speed drop from around 79, 80, and then it goes directly down to 11 to 14 kilowatts. So we're getting really close. We'll uh, just chatter while we're waiting for it. We're at 79 now. This is sort of exciting. Hopefully I didn't waste a, a trip out here to charge, uh, try the charging curve. We've been here 41 minutes. That's a little bit slower than the like advertised 10 to 80 at 38 minutes. But like I said, we did start out start off with a cold battery. And uh, it's really cool that it's at 79 kilowatts at 79%. And it should click over any second now. What do you guys think? You think it's going to stay up? Uh, and oh, I thought it was flipping. Now it says 80. So, so it is slowing down. Oh no. 43. Nice. It's staying at 43. It did not go all the way down to 11. That is awesome. That will make going above 80% a lot nicer. And it's back up to 44, 45. Let's uh, keep a watch on it for a little bit longer. Yeah, normally at this point, like I said, it's down to 11 to 14 kilowatts. So at 44 kilowatts, that's not bad for a battery pack that's at 80% state of charge. So this last 80 to 90%, 10%, you know, increase will take longer, but it'll be a lot faster than going at 11 kilowatts. So if you're wondering why there's no one in the passenger seat today, that's because Liv had to work. I had an extra day off, so I decided to come do this charging test, but I miss Liv. I hope you guys are missing Liv. If you are, drop a comment down below and let her know that we all miss having her and her famous let's go. So anyways, that's why Liv's not here. Um, hopefully she'll be back in other videos quite soon. And to continue to update, we're still pulling 46 kilowatts and we're at 86% state of charge. I believe that I just heard the cooling pumps kick on for the battery. So as it's getting closer to the top end temperature, the, the battery must be getting warmer, but I believe I hear the fans running for the first time for the battery. And you can see we are 89.5% state of charge, still pulling 46 kilowatts. And I believe at 90%, it's going to slow down some more. And then I think it slows down some more at 95. So let's uh, watch that and see when it ticks over how much it slows down. And I can definitely hear the pumps on the car cooling the battery as it's getting to a higher state of charge. There we go. We hit 90. Is it slowing down? No, so far it's not, has it slowed down. It's actually at 47 kilowatts. That's pretty cool. Maybe the fact that it's pretty chilly outside, it's letting it stay up at a higher rate of charge. That hurt us a little bit on the lower end, but now that we are up at the higher end, maybe that's helping out. But I'll have to check and see what other people have gotten. But 46 kilowatts is awesome at 90% state of charge. The sun is coming out. We've been here... 59 minutes, just about an hour, still pulling 43 kilowatts, 93%. So we went from 10 to 93%. Hopefully that'll flip over to 94% in one hour. Yep, there we go. So 10 to 94% in one hour, and we're going to keep going. Let's see what happens when we hit 95%. Okay, 94.5, still pulling 43. And I noticed that uh, kilowatts coming in or being output by the charger jumped around between 42 and 50 in the past few minutes. And I think that is as the uh, car is cycling through the motors or the, the pumps to cool the battery that sometimes it is pulling more power, but I'm assuming that's because it's putting power toward running the pumps and not just charging. So here we go. We're at 95 and 
Is it slowing down? Does not look like it. That's pretty cool. So 95% and pulling 44.63. I'm looking at the screen on Electrify America and it's saying 44 kilowatts at 95%. Been here 61 minutes. And I think we're going to go ahead and start wrapping up. I think that is a pretty good test. Uh, there it goes. It just slowed down to 35. So now I think it's going to start to taper down uh, over to the last 5%. But that gives you a good idea of how long it'll take if you need to get maximum juice going into the car on a road trip and go well above 80%. And it's starting to throttle back little bit by bit we're at 96.5 percent and now it's down to 28.3 kilowatts still pretty impressive and like i said i think i'll go ahead and wrap this up it i i'm tempted to go all the way to 100 but i don't think i, I don't think we need to um maybe i'll let it do like 97 and i'll go ahead and get out and unplug and uh, call it good but this is a very successful test in my eyes the fact that it stayed at 46 for so long and then drop to 35, now 28. It's still well above what it was previously. So this is an excellent, excellent update from Ford. And I'm very happy that I got it. Now I just need to go on a road trip at some point. Okay, 65 minutes, 97% state of charge. Still pulling 28 kilowatts, but we're going to go ahead and hit stop. Let's see, there we go. And it just unlocked over there. I got 80 kilowatt hours, almost 81 kilowatt hours delivered in just over an hour. Let's see here. One hour and five minutes, 80.80 kilowatt hours. And it was a free session. So, all right, time to hit the road and go back home and uh, wrap all of this up. And here is the data that I exported from Car Scanner into a Google Sheet and then created this chart. The easy part to understand, of course, is the bottom where it starts at zero minutes and zero seconds and goes all the way up to just over an hour on the right hand side. And the blue line is my state of charge. So you can see that went from 10 all the way over to the right hand side, 97%. And that's a gradual, uh, smooth increase. And uh, the rate of charge in kilowatts started off at 100, went slightly up to just over 110, and then had this sort of smiley face curve where it went down below 100 and then back up over 110 again, then gradually drift down until, uh, let's see, that would have been about 45% charge, and then it dipped there leveled off at about, I'd say, 50% charge, and then it leveled at giving me about 80 kilowatts, all the way up to 80% state of charge. And then that's where the cliff always happens. And except this time, the cliff dropped down to about 44 kilowatts, held pretty steady all the way until we were close to 95% uh, charge, I believe it was, is when it dipped down again to about 28 kilowatts, and then it was drifting down uh, again at 97 where we actually unplugged. So that's the sort of weird, odd charging curve. Still has that big drop at 80%, but far less significant than in the past. I will put a link down in the description to this spreadsheet so you can take a look at the data for yourself as well as this chart. Thanks for checking out this Mustang Mach-E updated charging test. I'm very happy with the results. I hope you are too. Drop a note down below in the comments and let me know what you think of the new charging curve and what other improvements you want to see Ford bring to the Mach-E. And of course, stay tuned, stay subscribed, give this a big like, and also share it on those you know Facebook groups and forums that you are a member of. We like to get the word out and the more subscribers we get, the more fun tests we can do. So. Thanks for staying tuned for this whole video. Again, tell Liv eh, that we miss her and wish she could join me on more of these. And as Liv would say, no matter what you drive, enjoy the ride. I think I said that wrong. Did I? I don't know. God, I hear it every time and I forget. Oh, well. See you later. Bye.